When you think of the Appalachian Mountains, most people think about the Great Smoky Mountains in Tennessee and North Carolina or the mountains of West Virginia. The truth is, the Appalachian Mountains span from northern Alabama to Maine and into Canada. While the entire mountain range is referred to as the Appalachian Mountains, there are localized sections of mountains that have their own names due to their uniqueness within the greater Appalachian range. Examples of these are the Smoky Mountains in Tennessee and North Carolina, the Blue Ridge Mountains in South Carolina, North Carolina, and Virginia, the Allegheny Mountains in West Virginia, and the Green Mountains of Vermont. These great mountains contain some of the most diverse flora and fauna in the entire world. This gives these old mountains particularly unique interactions between species and ecosystems. The Appalachians are some of the oldest mountains in the world. They are much older than the Rocky Mountains, even though they are shorter due to millions of years of erosion. Ocean floor rocks that would become the foundation of the Appalachian Mountains were formed a billion years ago. The Appalachian Mountains started forming about 470 million years ago when the North American Plate began its journey bound for a collision course with the African Plate. Approximately 270 years ago, the plates collided and the mountains we now know as the Appalachians were formed. The foundational rocks that were previously mentioned would go on to form the Appalachian Mountains a billion years ago when the continents were pushed together into a supercontinent. Around 750 million years ago, the supercontinent began to pull away from itself and eventually split 540 million years ago. Low-lying areas became filled with seawater, forming new oceans and basins around the world. Basins created by this pulling apart of continents allowed rivers to deposit the minerals and sediments we find in the valleys of Appalachia today. Some of those deposits went on to become the bedrock for mountains such as the Great Smokies. Others, such as rock and sand, form the tallest peaks we see today due to their hardiness and inability to erode. Nearly every waterfall you come across in the Appalachian Mountains is due to these unerodable sediments, as even rivers can't carry them away. Thus, the low-lying areas that rivers carve have been done from softer sediments such as clay. The great valleys and plateaus of the Appalachian mountain range have been known to produce extremely fertile soil due to lime deposits. This occurred because of the erosion of previous limestone rocks formed under the low-lying oceans that used to cover these valleys when the continent broke off. Around 470 million years ago, the North American Plate changed its course and headed back towards the African Plate on course for a collision of fate. As the plate made its journey across the newly formed ocean, back to its original home, the plate contacted and smashed into lands and other land masses, which began to form bumps across the eastern tracts of land. Finally, 270 million years ago, the plates collided. Massive amounts of energy forced rocks against the North American plate, forming the Appalachian Mountains. Some of these rocks would crash with such force that they melted on impact, creating places like Looking Glass Rocks south of Asheville in North Carolina. Odd things happen when these huge accumulations of Earth's crust clash. An example of this is at Cades Cove in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. The limestone floor of Cades Cove is younger than the rocks that are now on top of the cove in the mountains above. This happens because of the tumultuous journey these pieces of crust can take. They sometimes flip over one another creating Cades Cove as they did. Similar to old age as a human, things erode. They become weathered and change as time goes to work. The case was the same for the Appalachian Mountains. When the age of the dinosaurs began 240 million years ago, the North American plate split again from Africa and headed westward. This created the Atlantic Ocean. Even today, the Atlantic Ocean is growing as the North American Plate continues its journey westward. During this time of Atlantic Ocean expansion, the Appalachian Mountains were feeling the full force of erosion. Over the last 100 million years, erosive forces have leveled out what was once a mountain range taller than the Rocky Mountains into mere shells of itself. With the introduction of plants to the mountains over time, the erosion process has increased. Lichens and mosses break down the rocks, wind and water follow suit, sending the remnants of the mountains into the Atlantic Ocean and Gulf of Mexico to be sent to the ocean floor. The Appalachian Mountains were formed from the fury of Earth's crust. 
They have lived a long time on this planet as they continue to be pounded by erosion constantly as they will continue to be for millions of years in the future. But what will happen to the mountains when that erosion is finished? The mountains as we know them will cease to exist. However, there is a chance new mountains could be formed in their place. Nature is an ever-evolving process. Nothing ever stays the same. But it is recycled, and the spirit of the Appalachian Mountains is something that can never go away. It lives inside us. It lives inside every plant, insect, and mammal that was lucky enough to survive off of what it gave to us.